What's going on everybody? Mike here, AX Garage. Welcome back to the channel. And also another video on our Y49 project, 1989 Honda CRX SI. As you guys can see, this car is completely painted in this beautiful Y49 Barbado yellow. Now today's video, we're gonna pick it up where we left off and also show you guys step by step how we get here. So now we're gonna pass you guys with Brian at Paint Society. And now here is the start of our CRX project. You can see that everything's been properly detrimmed and we have our work cut out for us. You can see that the doors for the most part aren't in bad condition, but they will need a blocking. Now we're gonna be using 180 grit on a 3M block. And the reason why we're gonna do this initially is because we want to identify first all the areas of concern. And what do I mean by areas of concern? Well, the areas that might still be shiny after we block, well, those are gonna be areas that are low. And by low, what we mean is they just need a little bit of glazing putty, not even body filler. Now a body filler for the most part generally is going to be a thicker filler that has more body. And what we used here is a glazing putty commonly used for nick scratches or minor, minor low spots. An equivalent would be feather fill or a polyester primer can work as well. You can see here the different layers which will be smoothed out when it comes to priming. Now we follow the same process on the hood. You can see a lot of sanding was needed and these are older cars so you will need to get that block out. You'll find that we rarely are using the DA sander unless we're doing the refinement for paint. And every single panel on this vehicle is getting the full service. The full blocking out initially will identify the spots of concern that might need a little bit of filler or some metal work. This is the best way to handle any restoration is by getting the block out and seeing what is going on first before you start to do any body work and then you can put your body filler on the appropriate areas. Now once everything was sanded, we're gonna be going with a feather fill product, which is a polyester primer. It's almost like spraying body filler onto the panel. So by using that glazing putty and the polyester, we're gonna have the consistency to really block it down nice and even. Now we're applying this with a 1.8 fluid tip, which is a big fluid tip, but you can also move up to a 2.3 if it's not coming out smooth enough. And we applied this polyester primer to most of our body panels that had the body filler and the body work that was needed to get it straight. Now you wanna give it a good 24 hours before sanding, but what I like about this primer, it's not gonna shrink down the road since it is in polyester. After we sanded it down, you're gonna see that we're gonna be using our color build primer. Our color build primer is a color build that can be used for sealer or primer depending on how you have mixed it up. So we're gonna start by using our color build primer right here on the roof since the roof was in really good condition. It didn't need our feather fill. We got Juan going ahead and he's gonna primer the rest of the parts after we did a little bit more body work to the feather fill and to the doors and fenders and other various pieces on the vehicle, it's time to get this car back on track to looking a little bit more like the OEM Barbados Yellow. So after we apply two coats of that color build, it's time to do the same exact process. But this time we're gonna be blocking it out with a 320 grit. We'll use various blocks from skinny to wide to long to short to fit into the nooks and crannies and enable us to get a smoother, flatter finish once the car is all painted down. Now, once it's all been completely blocked, at this point, we can use our DA sander to go ahead and help us out to refine the scratch a little bit more. Now 
Now, once all parts have been DA sanded, we're gonna use a super clean foaming degreaser. And the reason why I like this degreaser is because it really gets into all the nooks and crannies. And you'll see, once it starts to pull the dirt, it really, really shows you where it's coming off of the panels, like the tires and in the moldings and by where the tail lamps were, you want all the dirt removed. So we're using our maroon scuff pad to get into all the nooks and crannies because we're gonna be fully refinishing this vehicle and we wanna make sure that we're not painting over any dirt or debris that was originally there when the vehicle was brought in. Now it's time to mix up our Barbados yellow and you can see it actually has a few different toners to get to that perfect OEM yellow tone. Now I mix up a gallon and I reduce it so when it comes time to paint, all I've got to do is pour it right out of my gallon container and into my PPS cup, and I'm ready to spray with the same exact color each and every time. This is a pro tip when it comes to spraying a full vehicle. Now throughout the next few scenes, you're going to notice the same process for all of the parts. First, they're going to get another sealer. Now remember we talked about that color build primer? Well, now we're gonna use it and turn it into a color build sealer. And that just has to do with how it's mixed. So you'll get the color build sealer first, you'll get the base coat and then the clear coat. So enjoy these few clips of us getting this OEM Barbados yellow color sprayed back in. Finally, we have the car in the paint booth. Now, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Now, if you did not know, this car originally came in a single stage. And we could tell by in the beginning clips that when we were sanding that the color was coming off with the sanding, something that wouldn't happen with a base coat clear coat. But we're bringing this vehicle into the new age and we're giving it a base and clear coat finish, a paint job that will last the lifetime of this vehicle. You can see that we're going ahead once again with our sealer coat, which is a very close color when it dries to the original Barbados yellow. Now all the jams will be painted at the same time as the quarter panels so that we don't have any tape lines along the whole entire vehicle. Now I always recommend if you're gonna paint the vehicle part, try to paint as many parts as possible 
the same time, whether we're in their booth or within the same day or two, because weather and temperature and humidity and different factors will change the color of the vehicle, even if it's coming from the same exact spray gun and the same exact mix. So you always want to try to keep the same consistency when you are spraying a vehicle. Make sure you have the same distance, you're using the same reducers, you're using the same spray gun and the same technique when it comes to applying the paint because believe it or not this can change the orientation of metallics or different types of pearls luckily for us a solid paint job isn't a biggest deal as those pearls or metallics but you can still get you into trouble if you're painting it at different times and not using the same foundation underneath the paint so when we use our color build sealer we use the same color each and every time for all of our panels underneath. That way when it comes to our base, if this color is transparent, we know if we apply two or three or whatever many coats it might have been to cover, we'll have the same consistent color. That's another pro tip. You always want to have the same exact color base or sealer underneath your color you're going to put down to ensure that your top coat colors all match when the car is bolted back together. We'll finish up here with the vehicle and then we have our bumpers to paint, we'll bring those in and we'll do a little bit of two-tone action. Now, once the car was all done, it's time to turn our attention to these bumpers that have seen better days. Now, instead of just preserving the black portions of these bumpers, we're going to actually have to refinish them completely because they do have some defects and holes along the way that need some filling. So we go ahead and tack the whole entire bumper and then we'll prime them. And once they're in the booth, they're ready for that same procedure, sealer, base and clear. And you can see that in this procedure, everything is done the same exact way so it matches. So this is after sealer and base coat. You can see that even though it does have black trim on it, we went fully with the color Barbados Yellow so we can make sure that we have a nice crisp edge between the black and the Barbados Yellow. So after clear coat, you want to allow a good 24 hours for this clear coat to dry 
and then at that point it's ready to go back into the paint booth you'll scuff up the areas that will get that sem paint that sem trim black paint that's available in spray can form or spray gun form the results are just the same either way and what you want to do if you're using the paint gun is use an extra slow reducer that's going to help keep that paint wet long enough you want to pull the tape right away otherwise it can bridge but check out this rear bumper it came out fantastic and stick along later on and you will see the front bumper once it gets installed back onto the vehicle Wow, well we just finished painting up the CRX. God, there was a lot of parts, but I gotta say, it come out really, really, really good between the bumpers, the moldings. You know, this project's really coming together. Now in the next episode, what we're gonna see is everything coming back together and being installed on to the car, from the doors, to the fenders, to the headlights, the bumpers, everything. This car's really gonna start to take shape and it's gonna look beautiful when it's all done. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned to the following videos so you don't miss any episode on this build. Until the next one, we'll see you on the next episode.